Good evening, church. Welcome to Holy Spirit Radio. Welcome to Holy Spirit Radio. I pray all is well. I pray that your faith have failed you not. I pray that you increase in our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. I pray that your eyes are fixed on Him. I pray that the hunger in your heart you got an appetite so big for His presence. That He rise you into the kingdom of heaven. For the night is far spent in the day of the Lord is at hand. And it's time for us to wake. And we must repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting for the end time to get here. Because the end is now. We're not waiting for the end time to get here. Because the end Good evening, brothers and sisters. Good evening, brothers and sisters. It's so glad to uh, I'm so glad to be able to gather with you guys, you guys again. Um, the Lord was willing. <laughs> we breathe in another day. You know, some of us can't say that. Some of us woke up on um, the side of judgment or, or being in torment, or some of us in the presence of the Lord. So a lot of times we take that for granted by waking up the next day, but it by grace that we woke up. We didn't wait that we woke up this morning. We did not have to wake up. So I'm just grateful that I'm able to gather with my brothers again, my brothers and sisters again, and, um, and have another day to be transformed in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Church, I have the I have the word for I have a word of the Lord for you today. Um. It's very serious and it's very much needed in such a time as it as we are in right now. And um I'm gonna share that word with you. Um, but first, church, I just want I pray that uh all has been well. I pray that the burdens of your heart uh be lifted. I pray everywhere that you've been struggling spiritually that Christ Jesus is your solution. I pray. Um that your circumstances have not been defined to you, but your circumstances have been shaping you more into the righteousness of Christ Jesus because you've been submitted to his will. And I pray that uh, that we would not be ashamed to confess our heart to our Savior because before we even confess it, he knows it. And to be honest, we want to be truthful. He wants us to confess it because to, to not confess it is also a sign of pride. Because we have a loving Savior that long to intervene in our heart, long to intervene, intervene in our problems, love to intervene in our struggles. But you have to understand he gives us a choice of free will. The Lord said you receive not because you ask not. And a lot of time we'll stay drowning in our problems, struggling in our problems, in our situation, our circumstances. Simply because we did not ask. And then on the other hand, sometimes we be in our circumstances, we be in our struggles because it teaches us a lesson that his grace is sufficient. That if he do nothing else, then he have already done enough on the cross. And then on the other hand, it teaches us how to have true joy that does not come from this world, but joy that comes from heaven because we look and hope in a greater resurrection. And that resurrection comes through Christ Jesus through his sacrifice. So before we get into this word today, let's reverence the Lord in prayer.
to prepare our hearts and a posture need to be in to receive all that the Lord have to say today. Okay. Oh Lord, a merciful God. Jesus, Lord, we repent of our sins. Forgive us, Lord. There's no one like you. There's no one like you, Lord. You're faithful. You're consistent. You never fail. You always on time. You always make a way out of no way. And even in our brokenness, you show the mightiness of your hand that strengthen us in the areas that we are weak at, Lord. You build our trust to understand that as long as we remain in your presence, as long as we abide in you, then we can experience the freedom that comes through your sacrifice. Oh, Lord, please hide not your faith, faithfulness, Lord. Oh, Lord, please never forsake us, Lord. Oh, Lord, please increase us in your presence. Oh, Lord, please shape us by your word. Lord, touch us with your power. Heal us by your spirit, Lord. Renew us with your mind, Lord. Gather us, Lord. As flocks in your arms, Lord. For you are the good shepherd, Lord. And there is no true shepherd apart from you because you is that true shepherd. You is that only shepherd. You are the good shepherd that take care of the sheep, Lord. Take care of us today, Lord, by your word, Lord. Fill us up in the areas that we are dry at, Lord. Cover us in the areas we need to be covered at, Lord. Strip us of things that offend you that don't need to be in our heart, Lord. Break us in the areas we need to be broken so we can heal properly to produce fruit that wells up into eternal life, Lord. Lord, let our life be lived according to your word and let your heart be satisfied according to your word because your word is life, and Lord, let us live according to your word so we can spend eternal life with you. May you be glorified in all things. May you be praised well before you are worthy of all things. And may you receive. And we pray that you receive our praise. Because, Father, you don't have to, but you choose to, Lord. Lord, receive our praise today, please. In our in humility. And in your and in, 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 in we come before you in humility, Lord. And please receive our pray, praise and mercy upon us, Lord. Because we're sinners, Lord. Father, we need you. We need you so much. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We go to your heart through your spirit. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, church, brothers and sisters, man, I got a serious word for you today, man. It's some stuff that been uh, uh, the Lord been revealing to me that is what has been going on, that the Lord showed something, a vision a few months ago, and I'm seeing it come to pass. So I'm going to give you a little update about what's going on and what's happening in this hour that we are in. And also, and also, um. Reveal to you and also reveal to you the things what the Lord wants us to hear. Okay. So, without further ado, I have a question from you. I got a question for you because as I sit back and I look at Christianity, I look at the number, I look at 
how so many people believe in Jesus and we confess, we say we believe in Jesus. Okay. This is very important. This is very extremely important. This is very important. Because Christianity is like a billion strong. It's like a billion strong. And many people think they will go and see the Lord. Many of us think that we will go to heaven. And the Lord dropped this like a bombshell in my heart today. For the Lord said, many in that day will say, Lord, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Matthew 7 22 he said many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in your name cast out demons in your name and done many wonderful wonder, wonders in your name and then Jesus said I then I would declare to them I never knew you depart from me you who practice iniquity you who practice lawlessness man that's tough man so out of a billion of us who said that we would go to heaven and say we believe the Lord prophesied right here and said many of us that in that day will say, Lord, Lord, it's many of us today. And he said many of us will say, Lord, Lord. But he will say, depart from me. I never knew you. For you practice iniquity. That is a deep and profound statement. Because, see, a lot of time we think because we do works, we cast out spirits, we feed people, we do all these things. We think that itself get us into the kingdom of heaven. But notice Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, despite what works you have done. Notice he said, they said, we have done many wonders in your name. They think because they cast out spirits that that was their ticket to get into the kingdom of heaven. Well, we have to awaken church that our works is not our ticket to get in heaven, but the righteousness of Christ Jesus being submitted to that righteousness through our heart is the ticket to heaven. The ticket of heaven, ticket to heaven is the righteousness of Christ Jesus and the righteousness of Christ Jesus have to be obeyed from the heart. So the works itself is not the ticket to get into heaven, but our heart are, uh, submitted to his will. It's the ticket to get into the heaven. He said, depart from me. I never knew you. Because see, the power is not in us, but the power is in his name. See, we can easily fall into a place of pride and think because we delivered someone of a spirit or we did this work that, man, I must be right in the sight of God. I must be uh going to the kingdom of heaven because of the work that I'm doing. But to be honest, when we begin to think that way, then we are, we are falling into a place of spiritual pride. Well, we define our relationship by works and our heart is far away from the Lord. And we will begin to do things in the sight of man, but when we're not in front of man, we do stuff contrary to the will of God. And think we get away with it because only we know but the sad part about it is we don't get away with it because God sees all things and knows all things and nothing goes or past his eyes because the heart of man is bare before his eyes. Meaning he see everything in us. He see us through, through and through. We are fully known. So if we are fully known, how, why did the Lord say, I never knew you? Mm, mm, mm. Why would he say that? You know why? Because the righteousness of Christ Jesus paints a picture that we are in him. Mm, mm, mm. So if we have not yielded our heart to him, then it did it did it did, did not then we did not bear the fruit that make us look like him in character. If our heart was not submitted to him, then our heart would not bear fruit that well up into eternal life that makes us look like him in character. 
Because the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, we live our life. He continually molding and shaping us. So when we stand before him, for us, he can see himself in us. But if we live a life of rebellion if we, and if we live a life of just doing works and our heart is not submitted to him, then we will do the work and live contrary to his will. And when we stand before him, we don't look like him. God, man. And he said, depart from me. I never knew you. Why? Because you don't look like me in your heart. Well, one might ask, well, Lord, why don't, why didn't, why don't I look like you in my heart, Lord? And the Lord will respond, you live this life glorifying yourself instead of me. God, man. Mm -hmm. You weren't doing your, you weren't serving, you weren't, you weren't doing this thing out of love for me, but you did it out of love for yourself. And because of that, you did not submit your heart to me, but you submit your heart to this world because you care more about how a man seen you instead of how I seen you. Gosh. Jesus, Lord. And because of that, he said, depart from me. I never knew you because you did not give me your heart. Jesus. Mm -hmm. You did not give me your heart. You just did works. But see, our works should never define our relationship with Jesus, but our relationship should, should define the works. And when you begin to live for Jesus, then the works happen organically and the works become a lifestyle. Because it's flowing through the love of Christ Jesus. And then from that point on, ministry is not something you go. Ministry is not something just on stage. Ministry is not something I do. But ministry becomes something I live. Mm -hmm. See, when you submit your heart to Christ. Your life is a full time ministry. When you submit your heart to Christ. Then you love him deeply. And therefore he knows you. Because he knows himself in you. God, baby. Mm, mm, mm. Jesus, man. Moving forward. Man, that's tough. Oh, that's so convicting, man. That, uh, that bring water to your eyes, boy. Golly. Okay. And then I would declare, and, and then I would declare to them, I never knew you depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was found on the rock see whoever submit their heart to christ and take me heed to his word and his righteousness and, and be transformed in his righteousness because you can't be transformed in his righteousness if you don't obey his will and see, when you obey his will, you do his work that you do the work that he's commanded you that produce fruits of righteousness that is in him. And whoever does that is, 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 is a wise man because he built his he built himself on the foundation of Christ Jesus and not himself. And because Christ Jesus is the strong man who reigns forever, therefore, when storms and, and trials come, he don't fall away because he have already been founded and solidified by the rock of Christ Jesus. And that rock who is Christ Jesus keep him no matter what storm try to rock him. But he's not broken, but he's victorious. Because Christ Jesus have already won the victory for him. See, when we define ourselves in Christ Jesus on the rock, then we will not be shaken because he is not shaken. But there's a contrast here what the Lord is saying too. now. He said, but everyone who hears these sayings in mind and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended when the floods came. The winds blew and beat on the house and it fell and there was a great fall. So whoever hear the words of Christ, don't obey the gospel, but choose to but choose to obey, but choose to disobey the gospel and live the way they want to live. 
or and and suppress the or suppress the Holy Spirit if they have heard the truth, then they're like the man who heard the truth. He's he, he, they're like the man he said right here, but they they're like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. See, you can't build your house on the sand and expect for it to stand strong when water comes. Why? When water hit the sand, sand goes to get wet, and wet, and whatever on top of the sand topples. God. And he said, "The man that does not obey me and do my will is like a foolish man that built a house on sand, and when rain come, it will be obliterated. It will be destroyed." That means if we live our life apart from the foundation of Christ Jesus, when this world transition and move to a different place or on a daily basis, then we will be destroyed because we don't have true hope in the rock, in a solid foundation. Because the foundation of Christ Jesus is true, is true hope. And apart from him, there is no true hope, which means if you don't have true hope, then you don't have a solid foundation to stand on. And when tough time come, you will fall away because you did not have truth to keep you up. Because only truth endures forever because Christ Jesus is that truth. Okay. Here we go. Now, we're going to come back to these two scriptures about the contrast of if you do not take heed to his word. In, in church, I have a few questions. I have a few questions. Um, I have a few questions after what we just said. Because he said, many in that day will say, Lord, Lord. So I have a few questions. Do Jesus really have your heart? That's a serious question. Do Jesus really have your heart? Because Depending on where your heart is, depending if depending on if your salvation is secure or not. Not because he, not because he is not faithful, but it's because you are unfaithful to his will because you're not surrendering your heart to his commands. Do Jesus really have your heart? Because works don't mean he have your heart. Do Jesus really have your heart? Because works don't mean works just don't mean work doing works don't mean he have your heart. That just mean you know what he expect for you to do. But if Jesus had your heart, you submit to his will for what you to do. See, anybody can know what someone expects, but when somebody yield their heart to what that person expects, it, pro it, it produces a deeper love <laughs> that is no longer defined by <laughs> an outward an outward Effect, but an inward desire to please the one who inspected the one who expected it. Okay. So do Jesus really have your heart? Do you do you really love him or do you love this world? Because a lot of us can say we love the Lord, but our heart is really in this world. Do you really love the Lord Christ Jesus or do you love this world? Because if you love him, you would live forever and you would endure all things. But if you love this world, you would pass away with this world because the present form of it is passing away. Mm. Do you really. Do you really believe that he is the son of God? Do you really believe in heaven? Do you really believe 
he is the son of God. Because he said, unless you believe I am who I say I am, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Because a lot of us say we believe, but when somebody says Jesus is coming soon, we say, hey, uh, uh, I, I know, but no time soon. So do you really believe that? Do you really believe in heaven? Because if we really believe in heaven, we will live our life submitting it to the earth, but we will we will live our life submitting it to the King Jesus because heaven is our hope. Heaven is, heaven is, heaven is our home and our hope is in Christ Jesus. Do we really believe he the son of God? Because if we really believe he the son of God, then we will respect, we will respect his authority. Jesus. If we really believe that he is the son of God, then we will respect his authority. Because Jesus loves us greatly. He's given everything for us. Jesus loves us greatly. He he with us in our brokenness. He with us with our, he with us, he with us in our struggles. He with us with in our pain. He here to encourage us. He here to push us. He here to guide us and just love on us and keep us no matter what struggle we're going through. He is with us. He loves us greatly. That is undeniable because he said there is no greater love than one laid down his life for his friend. And he laid down his life for us when he did nothing wrong. He loved us when we did not love him. He loved us when we rebelled against him. He loved them even though we rebelled against him. Right? Every time we have committed a sin, we put him on that cross. Okay? Everything we ever done was paid for on the cross. Okay? So he loved us greatly. But we can't take that for granted because Jesus also is God and he is holy. So if we believe, really believe in heaven, and if we really believe that Jesus is the son of God, then we will respect his authority. Do you trust that he is coming back? And if you do, do you trust by faith? Let me, excuse me, I'm excuse my guy's stomach. Do you trust that he is coming back? And if you do, do you trust? Do you trust him? And everything that he said, that if you be faithful and do it to the end, you will receive a reward or eternal life and reign with him forever. Because if we really believe that he will come back and we will be where he be at in heaven, and if we were to believe everything that he told us about receiving a reward of eternal life, then no matter what we go through, we won't compromise for this world, but we will endure to the end, Jesus. If we really believe that we will reign with him in heaven and in the new heaven and new earth, then we will pursue the things that come from God instead of the things that come from this world, Jesus. We will not live a life trying to be successful in this world, but we will live a life trying to go higher in the presence of God because we love his heart. More than our self, Jesus. God. Okay, is Christ Jesus your only hope? Is Christ Jesus your only hope? Is your hope in Christ Jesus alone? Is Christ Jesus your only hope? Is your hope in Christ Jesus alone? Because he is true hope. And apart from him, there is no true hope. Is Christ Jesus your only hope? Is your hope in Christ Jesus alone? Is Christ Jesus, is your hope is in Christ Jesus alone? Or do you find hope in this world? Because your hope should be in Christ Jesus because he is the only true hope. And there is no true hope apart from him. This is very important. This is very important. Why he should be your true hope. And we're going to make a statement, a powerful statement, and go even deeper about the hour that we are in and why important that he should be your true hope. We'll be right back after this break, church.
Welcome back, church. Welcome back, church. Welcome back, church. Welcome back, church. Welcome back. Um, now, we're going to talk about why this is important. We're going to talk about why this is important. That Jesus is your true hope. Now, number one is Christ Jesus gave us everything. He gave us everything. He laid down his life for us. That alone should be enough. That alone itself should be enough. That should cause us to respond in gratitude, thanksgiving, and love because he sacrificed greatly and went through a great suffering so we can be in the place that we're in in him. Second, second, we are in the last hour. Man. We are in the last hour. We are down to that last seven year period for the return of Jesus. I know we got a lot of plans, but the main thing we better be planning for is our heart being prepared for the return of Jesus and spending eternal life with him. Because we're in that last seven year period of Daniel's 70th week before the return of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Church, we are in the end. And you and our true hope have to be in Jesus. Because this world is false hope. This world is false peace. And if our hope is not in Christ Jesus, then we can be swept away. Because we are in the end. Okay. Remember the scripture we talked about earlier about. In Matthew 7, when the man, when Jesus said, whoever does not uh, um, do what I say will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And when a and when water hit the shore, it got it got swept away. Right. Well. We are in that last seven year period and the times are switching. The, 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 this thing is switching where they're going to persecute the truth. They're going to persecute those who said they believe in the Lord Jesus. And if you have not been transforming the righteousness, if you don't really have true hope in Jesus, if we are playing church and if we got one foot in and one foot out, then we won't. We will be like the man who built his house on, on, on sand. And when this wave, this storm come, then we will panic. We will be frightened and our heart will fail us because of fear, because we did not have true hope in Christ Jesus. So we have to be like the wise man who have been transformed because we purely love Jesus. And because of that, we can endure through no matter what trial we face because Jesus have our heart. Because we our because our, we were built on the rock in Christ Jesus and not on the things of this world. Because see, if you build your things, build your life on the things of this world, then the things of this world will enslave you in this hour. See, that's what the system of this world doing, this one world government, the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. So the, what, 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 what this world government doing and the system of this world is consistently feeding people the things of this world, continue, continually building people up in the things in the system of this world and you being enslaved in it and you don't even know it. And because of that, when they issue this mark of the beast, when they issue, when they say you can't, when they say, hey, you can't talk about Jesus, when you can't, when you, you gonna have to bow down to this world, this world religion, you have to bow down, you have to denounce Jesus, you have to walk away from the church. And guess what? You will, they, they say this, you, let me say this. When they say you have to den deny our Lord, when they say you can believe, but you have to compromise, then you will compromise because you don't have true hope in Jesus. Church, we living in an hour where they're gonna tell you to compromise the truth for world peace. Mm. And when you compromise the truth for world peace, in that moment you are denying Jesus. And when you take the mark, you if you take the mark, you will deny Jesus. And as a result, we can't answer, but we receive the wrath of God and go into the lake of fire. Church, this is a hard teaching, but this is the hour that we are in. And we have to be, we have to be, have true hope. We have to be built. We have to be built like Jesus said, the wise man built on the rock, built on Christ Jesus because he have our heart. We can't be like the foolish man because we will get swept away in this, swept away in this hour because we did not truly have faith in our Lord. See, the wise man truly had faith in Jesus. The foolish man did not have faith, uh, uh, faith in Jesus. He had a form of godliness. 
but his life denied the power thereof. Jesus. The foolish man had a form of godliness, but his life denied the power thereof. Because he knew what to do, but he chose to disobey it. God. So we not only do we have to not only do we have to know what we do, but we have to choose to obey what we know. Because if we don't obey what we know, it's like we know nothing at all. We are in the end, church. If Ephesians 6 says, it talks about putting on the full arm of God. It talks about putting on the full arm of God. Let's 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 locate what the full arm of God is real quick. We're gonna read the full arm of God and then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna transition back into the place of why the full arm of God is very important. We're gonna transition to why the full arm of God is very important. Because let me give, give me one second, church. Give me one second. We're going to talk about why this is important. Because we have the full armor of God. We have to have the full armor of God because we're in spiritual warfare on a daily basis. But when you when you hear about the full armor of God, you, you next have to ask your question, have to ask yourself the question, why do I need the full arm of God? Because this is important to the time that we are living in in this hour that we are living in. Okay, let's go to it. Ephesians 16. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Right? See, in this hour, in this last seven year period, the enemy is going to persecute the truth. And the truth are those who are the remnant of the seed. And that seed is Christ Jesus. And so those who believe in him is the remnant of Christ Jesus. And they will, he would try to persecute us because we know the truth and we would expose every lie that he do so we can set people free from deception through the Holy Spirit. So we must put on the full armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy, right? The devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, right? Because, see, there's a spiritual realm that our eyes can't see. And it's and 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 so 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 that we have to understand that we're not fighting against getting flesh and blood against people, but we're warring against evil spirits, right? Right. The Lord said, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. My part, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and have done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking Taking the shield of faith, which shield you, which with above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fire of darkness. So the wicked see with faith conquer every attack of the enemy, because faith caused him to fall, because faith on the cross defeated him. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Faith defeat every attack of the enemy because faith prevailed on the cross. Mm, mm, mm. So faith in the cross will attack every, will, 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 will cut down every lie and every deception of the enemy because the power of Christ Jesus that is in those through the Holy Spirit. Mm, mm, mm. He said, take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, right? The Holy Bible, the scriptures. And the scripture reveal Christ Jesus, who is the word of God, who the Bible talks about. Praying always with all prayer and supplication of the spirit, being watchful to this end with all prayer, perseverance and supplication for all saints. Mm -hmm. Notice why he said, wear the armor. Because God is not going to give us no armor for no reason. Whenever somebody need armor, it's because they are in war. They are in battle. Right? So it's two scriptures I want you to look at. It says, so you will be able to stand the wiles of the devil because we war against evil. Uh, he said, we, war, we, we because we war against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in, in heavenly places, right? So in the spiritual realm, 
Satan and the demons, they are warring against warring against people, warring against us in the spirit to try to lead us straight from the will of God. But only the power of the Holy Spirit who received through Christ Jesus help us cut them down and we be victorious because Christ Jesus have already won. Okay. Why is that important right now? Why is this important that we know who God is, understand who God is, walk in the righteousness of his son, Christ Jesus, because through him, we put on the full arm of God because it said put on the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness come through Christ Jesus. So the only way we can put on the arm of God is through Christ Jesus because his, the faith in him is our armor that brings all the rest of the armor together in one unity. Man. Okay. So, Notice that it's an evil wickedness in high places and heavenly places, right? See, right now we're in this seven-year period, church. Well, um, during the great tribulation that we're in the build up to the great tribulation, well, we're going against wickedness in high places. So in the politics, uh, on the news, in the governments, it's going to be a great shift because in the spirit, there's evil forces behind these, um, in, it's evil forces behind this government because the spirit of the Antichrist is at work. How do we know that? Romans 1 said, God said, I gave them over into a reprobate mind because they because they changed the truth about me into a lie. That they brought the image of God down to the image of a corruptible man. Pause. Can we, okay, can we see that going on today? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me give you an example. God, the, our Lord said they gave the truth. They turned the truth about me into a lie. Okay. Why would they do that? Because the spirit of the Antichrist is at work. And because man love darkness instead of light, they are being seduced by the spirit of the Antichrist because they don't love the truth who can set them free. And that truth is Christ Jesus. Okay. In the book of Daniel, it said the spirit, it said the Antichrist would change times and laws. See, right now we can see the stage set for the Antichrist to come on the scene. Why? Because the time and laws are already changing. Look how they call it uh, good, evil, even good. They persecuting people who believe in righteousness that comes from the Bible and exalting those who put, who who believe in the things of this world. OK, look how the, 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 the God saying Romans one, it, it was a prophecy. He said. That I gave them over to a reprobate mind so that they would do things that are natural. Okay, so the, what you're saying, Lord, I gave them over into the choice of their own free will. And because they love darkness, they became corrupt in their minds. And, and because of that, they did things that are unnatural. You know what I mean? That they started to change the order of God. There was a prophecy a thousand years ago through the apostle Paul, through the Holy Spirit. Can we see that day? Yes. Look how the governments, look at the world, how they exalted LGBT. Look how the world exalting a one world government. Look how they changing times and law. Look how they changing the order of God. Look how they, look how, look how, they, look how the spirit of the Antichrist is at work changing law, changing times, allowing chaos, allowing all of this stuff so people can fall under subjection of this fall peace so they can be destroyed by a one world government, which is a beast that have been given, that have been given authority by Satan. Look at the, look at the spirit of the Antichrist at work changing times and laws right now as we speak. Look how people getting persecuted by not by, by look how people get look how people getting persecuted. Look how people getting persecuted if they don't uh if 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 they don't uh bake a cake for uh, uh for the same sex marriage. Look how people are, are persecuted if they confess the Lord Jesus uh uh in certain countries. Look how people getting persecuted or believers are getting killed for making a stand for the Lord. Look how the governments are rejected. Look how the government are, 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 are starting to reject the things. Look how the government are starting to reject the things that come from the Bible. 
Look how the governments are completely moving, moving away from the Holy Bible, moving away from the scriptures. See, sin is sin, whether it's same sex, whether whether we do drugs, whether we do out sin is sin, no matter where the sin come from. But what I want to show you today is. Is how the laws of the land are changing, how they are changing law, how they are persecuting Christians, how, 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 how in certain countries they can't do this. They can't do that. Why? Because the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work and the one the one rule of Antichrist is going to come on the scene in the seven year period. We in the first three and a half years already. This last the 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 uh, the, the middle three and a half years uh, at the abomination desolation. He's gonna come on the scene, and everybody that their name is not written in the Lamb Book of Life is already gonna be deceived because it's happening right now. Okay, let me give you an example. The Lord showed me a vision. A few months ago, he showed me a vision of uh, people going. He showed me people going into neighborhoods, and he showed me people throwing stuff, burning, uh, throwing stuff in people's houses, burning, burn, burning up stuff, burning up stuff, right? People being showed me people being burned, uh, be people being burned up. People, a man was on the run because people was after him. So he showed me this vision, right? Of stuff being, uh, buildings and stuff being burnt, right? Mm -mm. And then through that vision, he led me to a revelation. About books being burned, right? Mm -hmm. He showed me this a few months ago. How about it came to pass, church? The Lord showed this two months ago, not two, but a few months ago, and I'm watching it come to pass right now. China, who have created a social credit score system, if you talk against their world, world talk against their world government, talk, I mean, you talk against, you talk against their government, then you could be labor and you could be un, like pretty much. Uh, cast out punished right punished nomad can't get a house punished right so let me let me come back for nomad let me just say you will be punished for talking against their government and what i recently just found out i looked at an article online on fox news that they have started burning bibles and taking down crosses now the lord showed me this a few months ago before this happened right now. He showed this to me a few months ago. It ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm just saying that Lord show us this before it happened. So when it happened, we'll believe. He showed this a few months ago. And I'm watching right now them burn Bibles and take down crosses just like he showed in a revelation a few months ago. Why is this important, church? Because the Lord said that they changed the truth about him into a lie. And they began to do those things that are unnatural. They became corrupt in their mind. Right. And because they become corrupt in their mind, they changed. They changed times and laws. And when they changed times and law, they were called good, evil and evil, good. So therefore, they persecute, persecuting the righteousness of God. How do how, how do they doing it? They burning Bibles. They taking down crosses, right? Labeling people if they talk against the uh, government. Where the evidence of this? Revelation thirteen. Whoever don't, uh, Revelation thirteen. Those that did not some those that did not take the mark of the beast. You know what it's saying? Those that did not submit to the government. God. Mm, mm, mm. Those that did not submit to the government. They was punished. Look in China how those that are not submitting to the government are punished. Mm -hmm. Why are they being punished? Because they standing up for the righteousness of God. They're not getting punished for unrighteousness. They're getting punished for righteousness. God. Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake. They are standing firm and being persecuted for the name of our Lord and Savior. So they're getting persecuted for righteousness. Not unrighteousness. You see the time they are living in where they persecuting them for righteousness instead of unrighteousness. Man. The Lord showed this a month ago, a few months ago, that this would happen, church. And I'm watching it. The Lord showed me this a month back. So I'm sharing it with us, with us, church, so we can see that the Lord showing us these things before it happened. They are burning crosses. They are burn. They, they, I mean, they're burning Bible, taking down crosses, just like the Lord showed a few months ago. 
Why is this important? Because they're changing times of law. Their minds are corrupt. The spirit of the Antichrist uh, uh, at work enslaving all of mankind. Those names that are not written in the Lamb Book of Life. And they will turn against and persecute those of the truth. But those of the truth shall stand firm in this hour because we know our God is controlled and we know who have already won the victory. Okay. Why is this important? Because there's a line, there's there's a line being drawn right now. In this seven year period, there is a line being drawn right now. Since December the 20, 2016, December the 6th, 2016, since Israel was announced the capital of Jerusalem, since they have been the embassy have been moved during a seven anniversary, we are entered into the last seven year period of day seven week. A line is clearly being drawn right now. Well, you either going to be with Jesus or against him. You either going to gather with him or scatter. Now is not the time to play church. Either you with him or you're not. Because if you got one foot in and one foot out, you will take the mark of the beast. Because if you one foot and one foot out, your name is not written in the Lamb Book of Life. Because only those na the names that are written in the Lamb Book of Life, they are all in for Christ. Now is the time it is to be all in or you're not. Now is not the time to be in between to be lukewarm you either gonna be hot or cold right now is a serious time church that we all have to consider this we really have to examine ourselves to see if we hot or cold because right now there is gonna be a time or a great testing of our faith and it's gonna really test tell those who are really for jesus and those who are not for jesus there is a clear line being drawn Right now, and you will be able, and, 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 and we and, and we will be able to tell those who are really not for him, and those who really are, because those that are really are, they will be mighty, they will be persecuted, but no matter what they go through, even if it costs them their life, they're not gonna compromise. But those that are not, they will compromise and take the mark. Why? Because a lot of this world right now are being uh being seduced, the spirit of the antichrist. It's seducing them and this this false prophet who's operating in the same spirit of this the same spirit of the Antichrist, right? Because they they're operating through uh a satanic spirit. So so through that, through that, through that, they are coming together with this one world religion to try to to try to uh unitize all religion. But we know the truth. There's only one way to eternal life, and that's through Christ Jesus. So those who stand up for truth is not going to compromise. But those who don't stand up for truth, who one foot in and one foot out, who, who was not built on the rock, but they built their house on the sand. This is back to that same scripture. This is why it's very important. Because if we build our house like the foolish man, when his persecution comes, we won't be radical. We won't be mighty. Our heart will fill us because of fear. And we would give our soul away to the mark because we did not have true hope in Jesus. This is a serious time that we are coming in, church. We're going to build up to the greatest tribulation this world have ever seen. And I'm not saying this to scare you, church. I'm saying this to prepare your heart and to build you up in the love of Christ Jesus so you can endure to the end because he loved us greatly. And because he loved us first, we should love him with everything in our heart. And that same love will cause us to endure to and endure through these times because our hope was in him and not as this world because the present world the present form of this world is passing away and we don't need to pass away with it see if we embrace that which lasts forever we will last forever but if we embrace that which pass away we will pass away so let's not embrace this world but embrace christ jesus okay okay so Right now, this world is changing the truth about God into a lie. How we know that? Because this this world is continuously losing morality, and everybody is right now being enslaved by this one world government. This one world government is a beast that got authority by Satan, and this one world government, the ten nation alliance have been born, and they're going to take authority over this one world government. Right? The United Nations have already uh, uh, is a is a entity that, that was created in one in one world in in. In a, in a one world, a one world government format, the ten nation will take over them. Okay, and this one world government is completely against the morality of, of Jesus Christ. They are completely against the morality of Jesus Christ. How do we know that? The Bible said in Revelation twelve that 
the enemy, Satan persecuted the remnant and her seed. Now, we don't give Satan no glory because he's already defeated. He's the defeated foe. The victory already won in Christ Jesus. But we can't be uh, naive and oblivious that we're not on, they're, they're, that we're not in a spiritual war. OK, so right now, in Revelation 12, it tells us that the enemy got booted out of heaven and he persecuted the remnant of the seed. Well, we know the seed of Abraham is Jesus Christ. Well, we are the remnant of that seed. We are the remnant of Jesus. So the Jews and the Christians are the remnant of Jesus Christ. Right. The Jews will be saved. And the Christian who, who believe in Jesus right now, we are the remnant of Jesus Christ. So in this hour, Satan will persecute. He will persecute. Uh, he will persecute the church and the Jewish people. How do we know that? Because the Christians are getting slaughtered. Getting per they are, we are getting persecuted. Man, it hurt to even say it. We are getting persecuted on all sides. And the Jewish people in Israel. Look how look how many uh, resolution the United Nations passed against Israel. Look how the whole world is turning against the Jewish people. Is that prophetic? Yes, it's prophetic. Because in Revelation 12, the Jesus told us, the word of God, the Holy Spirit told us, in Revelation 12, that the remnant of Jesus, the remnant of the seed, which is Jesus, will be persecuted. And the remnant of Jesus is the Jews and the church. Look how we are getting persecuted right now, just like God said thousands of years ago. Which shows you we are in that time. This was stated in Revelation 12, and right now we're seeing it happening right now. The Jews and the Christians are being persecuted. Okay. So the morality is being corrupt because the spirit of the Antichrist are at work and the heart of man love not the truth because they have pleasure in unrighteousness and in the darkness of this world. And because of that, they are being given over to a reprobate mind because they changed the truth about God into a lie because they rejected such a great salvation. Okay. Man. They've rejected a great salvation that have been poured out generously for them. Mm -hmm. They changing the truth about God into a lie. And what happened next at the morality? They exalt, okay. So God said in Romans 1 prophetic that they brought the image of God down to the image of a corruptible man. Okay. Why is this important? Because right now, if you look at the world in the state that it's in now, everybody is about man. Everybody is about self, right? See that how you know the darkness of the darkness of Satan. How do we know that? Because Jesus, when Peter got in front of Jesus, God, uh, Jesus said, "Our Lord Jesus said, who is God?" Said Pete, he was talking to Peter. He said, "Get thee behind me, Satan!" Right, right. Because see, Satan try to influence Satan try to influence us to stray away from the will of God. Right, right. So, so Jesus turned around and rebuked him and said. Get thee behind me, Satan. You don't have your mind on the things of God, but the things of man. <laughs> so whenever we get the thought in our heart and our mind about exalting man, and when you see a world begin to exalt man, it's all about man, it's all about self. What did this world government say? Oh, man, we can save the who's away. It's all about man. It's about about our utopia. We can do this. We can do that. We can save the earth. We can see this. Man can do this. Man can do that. Man can do that. Who that sound like? Satan. Why? Because he got his mind on the things of man instead of the things of God. What this one world gov what what is he trying to do through this one world government? Rule the world. Why? Because he wanna be because he got kicked out of heaven because he wanna be like God. Therefore, he trying to rule this world. God is going to crush him thoroughly. Him and this one world government. Why is that important? Because this is happening right before our eyes, people. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, this is right now happening right before our eyes in, 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 in this period. And this is a forewarning for what is the doc about to take place. It is finna go down. It is finna transpire. It is finna break out. Destruction is coming. Th after this war, people will fall into this false peace because they do not know true hope or they have rejected. No, it ain't because they don't know. They rejected true hope because they did not love the truth. And that truth is Christ Jesus who produces true hope in the heart of man. 
What else the other evidence that they changed? What is the other evidence of the time that we're in? They changed in the order of God. And we see that today. What's the next thing? How else do we know that, that well, well, let me say this. They don't want to be held accountable. Man want to be in control of their own life. Man want to be his own idol. Man want to be God. And when man heart is in that place, you know this, you, you know a evil spirit is influencing him because he chose not to receive the truth. See, man don't have to be enslaved by this evil because man can choose Jesus. The truth in the matter is God give man a choice of free will. And God will never overwhile our free will. That's why I run one. God said, I gave them over into the desires of their own heart. Why? Because God ain't going to force us to do nothing. He's a gentleman. He wants you to choose him. Sadly, some of us are choosing the other way. And in this, in this hour, if we don't choose Christ, we will be deceived and we will be lost forever because our name is not written in the Lamb Book of Life. What is the re what, what is the condition of man's heart that caused man to fall into this place? Pride, arrogance, rebellion. God opposes a pride heart. Satan got booted from heaven because of the pride that filled his heart. God opposes a pride heart. A proud heart is arrogant. And an arrogant heart is rebellious towards the will of God because it is rooted in pride. Church, let's not be prideful, but let's be humble. Church, let not our heart fill us of fear, but let's be strong because we have hope in Christ Jesus. Church, we have took times ahead, but our God is greater. And because our God is greater, we will be radical. We will be mighty. We won't be weak. We will be strong. We will testify. We will snatch many out of fire. And we will walk faithful and endure to the end. Because we can trust Christ Jesus to guard and keep us until that great day to finish everything that he has started in us. Because he is faithful. Even when we are unfaithful because he cannot deny himself. Church, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for gracing us with your presence. We thank you for who you are. We love you not for what just not just for what you do, but who you are. Thank you for how you treat us. Thank you for how you love us. Thank you for allowing us to experience you. Thank you for thank you for preserving us for yourself. Jesus. Father, we are not worthy of your goodness. But we thank you for your goodness because your goodness brung us to repentance. Lord. Father, what would we be if you did not allow us to repent? Thank you for allowing us to repent because repentance is a sign of your kindness and your mercy on a sinner, Lord. We thank you for giving us repentance because you did not have to give us repentance. We thank you for giving us grace because you did not have to give us grace. We thank you for giving this you because you did not have to give us yourself. Thank you for giving us your best when we operated at our worst. Mm. Father, may you forever be praised. May you forever be glorified. Lord Jesus, may you forever be lifted up high in the heavens because you're worthy to be crowned king of kings and lord of lords. May our life be lived according to your will. 
And may we reign with you, Phil. Thank you for being a good shepherd. Thank you for feeding us. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for our brethren. Thank you for our family. Thank you for all the angels you have dispatched fighting for us in the spirit. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, God Almighty. Father, we just want to thank you for all the numerous things you do for us. Things that we don't even know you do. You do it, Lord. So we just want to give thanks. We just want to send up a prayer of thanksgiving. And of love. Because you've been long-suffering from the beginning in the hopes that all will come to the knowledge of your son. Father, we send up a prayer of thanks for you. And we love you so much, Lord. And we pray we be righteous with you and keep us from all unrighteousness, Lord. Keep us from all unrighteousness and help us to hunger and pursue righteousness, which is in you, our Lord. We thank you so much. Father, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you so much. Thank you, God Almighty. You are the one and only true God. Blessed be your name forever now. And if you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Lord. Thank you for leading me to this place. Fill me up with your spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in you for salvation. I believe that you sent your one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my risen Savior. I repent of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Fill me up with your spirit. And teach me to walk in your ways. In Jesus' precious, holy, and matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 If you, if you meant that prayer from the bottom of your heart, you did the best thing you can ever do in your life. If you meant that prayer from the bottom of your heart, you did the best thing you can ever do in your life. Now go and get baptized in some water in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then get... And pray that the Holy Spirit will lead you to brothers and sisters who are led by the Spirit of God. Who can help you grow in the scripture. Who can help you grow in the Bible. Who can instruct you in the ways of God. Because they live the ways of God. Through the Holy Spirit. So you can grow. Because God created the community. Created uh, the walk of the believer. To grow amongst brothers and sisters. So I pray. That you find the, the people who God wants you to be with. Whether that's in a building, whether that's in the house, or whether that's in the park, or if you have to gather across the phone, grow with genuine brothers and sisters who love Christ Jesus, who are filled with the Spirit. Church, that's all I have for you today. And I pray that it was a blessing to you. This is a forewarning. So let's prepare our hearts for the return of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Church, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, love us, love us, love us so, 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 so much. And he's coming soon. See you next time, church. Love you. Church, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is coming soon for his bride. He's coming for her. He want her without spot and without blemish. And the only way to be without spot and without blemish is to be covered in his righteousness by living the way he wants us to live. Church, he's coming soon. His return is near. Let's prepare our heart for the return of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. And church, remember, we're not waiting for the end time to get here. Because the end is now. <laughs>